one take hitch is in the building. I'll probably take multiple takes and mesh them all together, actually, um, just to get all my shit in one place. <laughs> but I got top surgery and that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm currently one week post-op for the first surgery and I am five days post-op for the hematoma removal. So I'm only five days out of surgery and I'm already off of the painkillers. I'm already functioning at semi-normal capacity. Uh, it happened very quickly. <laughs> um, I just wanted to talk about my experience and just everything surrounding it and not even I didn't vlog it because I didn't think that capturing that part was that important um I just want to get the like general idea of what it is for me out there um so without further ado my name is Hitch I am 20, 20 I'm tw I'm 20 years old I'm 20 years old as of today um and i came out so coming out oh geez i came out to myself um as how i identify and who i am now um almost a year ago like almost exactly a year ago and that is a transmasculine, non-binary individual. Um, my pronouns are he, him, or they, them, but I prefer he, him. And I started tea five months ago um, with pretty much every realization and decision that I make in my life. It all happened really quickly, comparatively to the journeys I've seen other trans people go on. Um, which is not to compare them in any sort of like scale in that sense, um, but rather to say I've just noticed that I did everything really quickly. And despite doing everything really quickly, I thought it completely through. And I don't regret any of the decisions I've made medically, um, physically, socially. I am very accepting of all of it. Um, gosh, as soon as I had a chest, I knew I didn't want one. Um, but I didn't know that that was an option for me. And for a while, I tried to just accept that I had one. I was never, I never had a large chest to begin with. Um, I was, I think that the largest it ever got to was a small B cup, if that even like matters. Um, just very, very tiny palmfuls um, <laughs> of breast. And I, I tried to accept it. And I was able to accept it and I was able to appreciate it for what it was and what it meant to me, um, but not in longevity. It wasn't ever something I intended on keeping there. And the thought of having that on my body for the rest of my life was a bit unnerving. So in order to try to accept it at first, I didn't know that it was a trans thing. Um, I didn't interpret it that way. I just thought that I didn't want to grow up. I thought that I wanted to stay little forever um, until I realized that the concept of becoming a woman or turning into a woman wasn't scary to me because it was different or because I was getting older, but because it didn't fit me. Um, so I 
just, I bottled it down for a while. I, when I started wearing bras, I would wear bras that were maybe a cup size too big or that were push-up bras or that were more padded than other bras. I just tried to accentuate that and make peace with it in a sense that maybe if I do it this way, I'll like it. Or maybe if I wear this bra, I'll like it. Or maybe this top will make me like it. Um, and it did a little bit, but it felt more like I was putting on a costume for people than actually living in my own skin. Um, so when I found out what top surgery was and I found out that you didn't have to be a binary trans guy to get top surgery, I knew that I wanted it. And this was about 16, um, but it didn't really, it didn't really like enmesh so much until I came out to myself and subsequently the world um, a year ago. I didn't really care about it that much and I thought that the discomfort I felt with my body was something other than gender dysphoria. Um, and then once I realized that it was something that could probably be eradicated or fixed by going on hormones and by getting top surgery, I was like, okay, I definitely want to do this. And I started saving money. I crowdfunded for a very short period of time because I thought that I was going to go with a different surgeon who would have, it would have been out of pocket. He doesn't take insurance. Um, but yeah, <laughs> going on hormones, physically transitioning, medically transitioning, was a big fucking deal for me. Um, and I feel like it wasn't a big deal in the sense that it's a big deal for other people necessarily. Um, in my experience, I have mental illness and I am neurodivergent and I'm autistic. Um, and all of that kind of compounded into this idea, this concept of what my transition should be and who should be around for it and who should be supporting me. And it was fucking hard. Um, I moved out a year ago during the pandemic. My parents moved to a different state and they told me I could stay or I could come with them. Um, and I didn't want to go with them because I'd lived in the place that they lived before and I didn't have a very good experience of it. Also, it's like a ridiculously small town, like maybe 800 people, um, including kids. <laughs> and I wasn't up for that. Um, so I stayed in Richmond, Virginia, and I put myself out there, um, to say the least, which is not a bad thing in and of itself, of course. But the thing that was bad about it is that it ended really traumatically and really, really badly, um, shit that I'm going to be dealing with for the rest of my life. And that's not intrinsic of um, any or and or all queer communities, um, but just so happened that the clique that I tried to become a part of um, rejected me in very viscerally inappropriate ways. Um, and the reason this is significant is because I had like next to no queer friends to support me through my transition. I decided that I wanted to go on testosterone a year ago when all of this was coming to fruition in my head. Um, 
I knew that I wanted to go on T. Um, I was scared, I was terrified even, but um, I knew that I wanted to and I knew that ultimately it would be beneficial for me. Um, and then I had one of the most traumatic experiences of my life. Um, and I decided not to because I didn't have support. I didn't have people cheering me on. I had a huge complex about it because several of these people that I really badly wanted to be friends with um, are like fairly prominent in Richmond on social media. And I was jealous of that. And not entirely in a toxic way, but sort of in a like, I wish that I felt the love that they must be feeling sort of way. Um, it's hard to compare yourself to other people and where they are, because I know that these people probably started where I was um, with nobody and scared and alone um, and in a really dark place, but they weren't there anymore and they didn't seem to mind putting me in that position. So I held off for months and months and months until I was just like, I can't take it anymore because a similar thing seemed to have happened at the time and I didn't have anyone again. And I was like, there's never gonna be a correct time in my life to do this. I need to be on hormones now. So I went on tea and really started saving up for um, top surgery because the longer I was on T, um, the more dysphoric I got in other ways. It changed my dysphoria a lot. It alleviated most of it, but it, it changed a lot. And I was ridiculously uncomfortable with having a chest. So, I, I made my way into my consult with the surgeon that I ended up choosing. And I remember having not slept the night before. I was wearing what I wore the day before. I was still wearing the same makeup. I was a wreck. I was running on <laughs> like caffeine and sheer will and was just like, I need to just get this done so that I can make this choice for myself and be on a better path. Um, and I did, and I didn't ever think I'd end up in the same office again um, for any reason other than that. I just didn't think it was something I'd ever be able to do for myself. It wasn't something that was conceptualized to such a degree in my head that I could actually see it happening. It was more of just like a foreign concept of something that I'd appreciate greatly happening, but not something that I saw the pathway to being possible. Um, but I did it. <laughs> I did it. And I got double incision, no nipple reconstruction needed. I have nipples, um, they're my nipples, they're still there, but they didn't have to take them off and reapply them. Um, I didn't have to have nipple grafts, rather. They just did an incision under each breast and then took out the breast tissue mm. and probably some other shit and then sealed me back up. <laughs> and I, didn't it, the point in which it became like concrete in my head that it was happening was probably like a week before it happened like two weeks ago that i was really like wow this is i'm doing this like <laughs> i'm getting the ball rolling um and then the actual surgery and being in the hospital. I don't remember much of it. Um, I was on a lot of drugs, um, prescribed and used intentionally 
I was intended, rather. <laughs> and I remember going in and being really excited and not nervous in the slightest. And then everything else is kind of a blur. <laughs> Um, because from then on I was consistently medicated and that warps shit a lot. <laughs> but, um, I did it and I went to stay with my aunts, um, and was very medicated for a lot of that time as well. And I've struggled with opioid usage. Um, before, so I was afraid to have oxys <laughs> um, and be able to come off of them and not desperately want to go back on. But I wasn't in the depressed state that I was back when I got a bit attached to them. Um, so it wasn't a problem. and. I feel fucking amazing. Um, I, I would say that I'm at my best point I've ever been at. And the just gravity of that is huge because it can get better than this. Like, I know that this isn't the actual best point of my life. Like, this isn't the best it's ever gonna get. But knowing that it feels this great already and it can feel even better. It's just like, it's a lot. <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm so grateful. I have no chest dysphoria now. Um, the first time I saw it after the surgery, I was quite swollen. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I had a hematoma, um, which is not intentional, of course. Uh, it was a complication, I guess you could say, and had to get that removed, but I wasn't, even, I wasn't even worried about it. But the first time I saw it, I was on a lot of drugs and just kind of like looked down and this side, the right side was like a lot bigger than the left and I knew I was supposed to be swollen but I knew that I wasn't supposed to be that swollen on that side. Um, and I wasn't scared or anything, I knew that they would do something about it and everything would be good. So I had the surgery and I came back and then I just consistently wore the surgical, the surgical uh, binder that they gave me when I went home and just started recovering really quickly. I thought I was gonna be like a lump or a slug for like two weeks, but as it turned out, five days is enough time for me to like get back to pretty normal activity. I'm still taking it easy. I'm not overloading myself and I'm making sure not to like push myself too hard. Um, but I looked at it for the second time and everything, everything, it was looking a bit gory because I have the, I still have the drains in, um, and this side scar, the right side scar is a lot more prominent than the left side because that's where the hematoma was again. Um, so I loved it anyway, and I like recognize it. And now when I actually look at my chest, even before I'm even close to fully healed, it's just, I, I feel like myself. I feel like I'm living inside my own body. I don't look down and feel like everything would be fine if this were flat. I don't look in the mirror and push my chest down and like everything, everything would just be great if, if this were gone. It's like, no, everything that I want to be there is there. And I, it'd be fucked up to <laughs> deny anyone this experience. <laughs> If this is what they want for themselves, it's just, 
I'm starting to coagulate. <laughs> I've been using that word a lot lately. I've been starting to coagulate a friend group, um, which is just fantastic. I feel like I'm making my way into the world, coming of age. Um, I have a support system now, and I don't think that I would if I hadn't have taken the steps that I took, if I hadn't transitioned medically like I have, which is not to say that it's the option for everyone, but it was the option for me, and it needed to have happened. Um, everyone in my life has noticed a difference in my mental health and my composure in the way I carry myself, um, in the way I talk to people, in the way I look at myself, in the way I talk about myself, um, in the way I just walk around in my shoes. <laughs> um, it all fits now. I fit now and it's strange and I love it. <laughs> um, I'll probably do more videos about my top surgery because I recognize that this video didn't really talk about it entirely. Um, and there's a lot more to be said about that part of my transition. So it'll happen, um, <laughs> I really hope. And I hope that this was useful to someone. Um, I hope that this inspires someone to take the steps they need to accepting themselves and to carving their own path. Um, because that's what I've done and there's really not a better feeling. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Take care of yourself. <laughs>